In this video, we're going to show how you can take a scan and convert it into a file that you can use in your 3D printer. So first off, we're still in VxScan, and we want to send this file over to VxModel. So we click on the button, Send to VxModel, and a new node opens up in your navigation tree. If I want to make my file size smaller, I can get rid of my VxScan section by right-clicking on it and deleting it. So now we're only working with our mesh from VX model. Just to make sure that we don't overwrite this file, we can also save the session as a different name. Now make sure you don't click on save session because if you do, then you might overwrite your file of your scan. So here I'll give it a similar name, except I'll put underscore VXM to know that I'm only working with the VX model portion of my scan and click save. So now I'm ready to edit my mesh. One of the first things I'm going to want to do is get rid of these isolated patches. So in my selection tools, the yellow tools, I can click on isolated patches and it highlights any pieces floating around. This slider bar allows me to choose the smaller pieces all the way up to the larger pieces. So first it selects the small pieces with the lower values of the slider bar. Since I do want to highlight everything, I'll bring it up to 100 and then I'll delete. So now I can delete the table section of my statue. So I use similar normal, hold the control key and click on the flat section of my table. At this point, I'm almost up to my trophy, but I do want to get a little bit closer to get rid of some of this material. So I click on the Grow Selection tool a few times, and I'm okay with it creeping up a little bit past the trophy, and I can delete that and edit that later. So I want to make sure everything looks good, rotate my part, and once I'm ready, I can click on Delete button. This is also found on your keyboard. So now I don't want these other pieces and I can click on isolated patches once again and delete. Since I'm left with this excess material at the bottom, I can get rid of it in a different way. I'll go to my freeform selection tool. I choose select through to make sure I highlight everything behind what I'm selecting as well. And then I simply hold control and click a few times to highlight my section that I want to delete. Always rotate your part to make sure that you are not getting rid of anything you want to keep. Once I'm here, I want to clean my mesh to be able to make sure that I don't have any spikes or other things like that. So by clicking on clean mesh, I can see a list of items that can get fixed. These numbers here are representative of the triangles that are affected by each item. And if I click on parameters, I can move around my slider bars to change the levels and tolerances of the different things that are going to get fixed. So I click on apply, and you'll see that the red goes away, and those were the things that were getting affected. And I can click on OK. So now I'm ready to fill some of these holes. I'm going to start with cleaning up the base, filling up the base hole so that I can have a flat region down at the bottom. So in order to make a nice flat base, I'm going to want to edit some of the sides to make sure that I have a nice rectangular shape down at the bottom. So first, I'm gonna fill this hole with a partial hole fill method by going to fill holes and then going to partial. I'm gonna use the flat filling method and then I'm going to select the first point, the last point, and somewhere in the middle part of the hole that I wanna fill. Okay, that looks pretty good. So then I'll click on okay and I do wanna edit the bottom section so that I have a nice edge down at the bottom before I fill that hole. 
So in order to do that, I'm going to click on Edit Boundary, and then I'm going to use the Fit to Entity tool. And since this shape is pretty rectangular looking, I'll choose the rectangular entity type. Then when I click here, I can see a rectangle that is showing me where my boundary is going to get edited to. So I'll click on apply. And there I can see that it's much smoother now. Click on OK. And now I can see a nice smoothness everywhere. So now I'm ready to fill that bottom hole. I'll click on fill holes. And this time um, I want to make sure I use flat because if I don't, if I use low curvature, you'll see it makes a weird kind of bump. So I can hit undo. And then I can click on flat and try that again. I'm going to leave my smooth boundary layer to zero to make sure that's nice and flat. And then I click at the bottom. Looks pretty good. Nice and smooth. So now I'm ready to edit the rest. So let's say that I wanted to edit some of these holes. Now, if I simply go around filling all of the holes here, I might have some things that don't look great. So let's first check it out and see what happens when we do fill all the holes up at the same time. Don't worry, we can always undo it. We'll click on apply there and then rotate the part to see what that looks like. Now, if you're perfectly happy with this, you can go ahead and clean your mesh, export it. But if you do want to do some editing, like on this hand, for example, you can go ahead and hit back and do some editing to fix these things. Everything else seems to look pretty good, except maybe here we have some sections that we can edit to make them um, less soft. So we'll hit cancel. And now we can start editing some of these sections. So what I want to do here is use the tool extend boundary. And for extend boundary, I can choose the length that I want my section to ex get extended by. So here I'll leave it at six and I'm going to have to choose my different sections to extend outwards to. So it guides me and tells me first point, then I click on the last point, and then I click on the middle point. So I'll do that, first point, last point, then the middle point. Okay, and I know that looks a little weird right now, but we're gonna clean it up. So we'll do that one more time. First point, last point, and middle point. Looks good. And then I can do the same thing on the other side. First point, last point, middle point. Okay, so we'll start off with just this side for now. We can click on OK. And then I'm going to go to Edit Boundary. So then I'll choose Partial. And here, what I want to do is soften this boundary. So instead of it being spiky like this, I'm going to make it go smooth by clicking my first point, last point, and middle point, just like before. You can see that green line is showing us what the boundary is going to look like. Okay, And then I can do the same for the other sides. Okay, so now we can test it out and we'll see what that's going to look like. We'll fill holes and we'll click on each of these holes here to see how that turns out. Okay, that looks much better. 
Another way we can do that is by going to the other side and showing another method here. So once again, we'll go to extend boundary. First point, the last point, and the middle point. And then here, I'm going to change my volume to three millimeters because I don't want too much more. Okay, let's see how that looks there. Now I'm going to delete some of my triangles, single triangle mode, and then highlight the points there and then grow the selection. And then delete. Same thing on the other side. And then delete. And now I'm going to edit my boundary. With a partial. And if some of this stuff exists here that you want to fix, you can fill partial holes there too. First point, last point, middle point. And there we go. So now we can see what these are going to look like. Not bad. Okay. So there, the hands look nice and smooth. Now we wanted to show some of the details here, so we can use the partial, and we'll click on the first, last, and middle point once again. And let's try it with flat. So if we do it section by section, we'll be able to keep some of that detail there. And then we use whole fill method. We'll do the same over here. Now, I feel like this is a little bit too flat, so if you realize you don't like something, you can always hit undo. And this time, instead of flat, we'll use the low curvature filling method. We're still in partial mode. And this is looking a little bit better. Switch back to flat, and we can do the rest. Same thing goes for this side. If you realize you don't like something, you can always go back. This looks fine with me though. Alright, much better. Let's take a look at this bigger hole here. So we'll use low curvature. It looks pretty good. Now remember, this is going to be 3D printed, so it's okay if you have some extra material. Some of this might be some good support for your 3D printer but it's really up to you. 
So at this point I feel like most of the holes can now get automatically filled. So we can go around, make sure that everything looks pretty good. And if we're ready, we can bring our slider all the way up to 34. So the, all 34 holes will get filled. And you can see which holes are gonna get filled by moving the slider bar. And anything that's yellow is gonna get filled and anything that's pink will still be there as a hole. And then we'll click on apply. So if everything looks good here, we're ready for our last steps. And now we'll click on clean mesh. As we can see, there's some triangles that are still being affected by some things here. So I'll click on apply to fix those up. And OK. Now at this point, I can send it over to my 3D printer. I can also decide to align it so that my origin is in a place that makes a little bit more sense. So we're going to go ahead and do that by creating some planes. So up here under Entities, we'll go to Plane. It's already set to my building mode of triangle selection. So I hold Control and then I can click on a surface and then it will automatically pick my plane. Now I did like my bottom plane here because it's pretty flat. So I'll click here by holding Control. And there's my plane. So I'll click Create. And now I'm ready to make my plane 2. It automatically changes the name to plane 2. So here I'll have plane 2, create, and hold control and click here to create plane 3. And when I align it, I want to make a plane right down the middle. So I'll use plane 2 and 3, which I just created, to make my middle plane plane 4. And here my middle plane is right somewhere in the middle, but I can't really see it unless I check the length and the width boxes and give it higher values to be able to see it better. So I'll put 300 here and this one will be 100. And there's my middle plane. So we'll do this one more time, this time creating the plane down the middle this way. So my building mode is going to go back to triangle selection. I choose my plane on each side. And then I switch back to middle plane creation mode and choose my planes 5 and 6 to create my plane 7. And now I'm ready to align. I can click on Align to Origin. And then I'm going to choose each of the planes needed and restrict them to my XY, my YZ planes. So plane 1 will get restricted to XY. Plane 4 will get restricted to my YZ plane. And my plane 7 will get restricted to my XZ plane. Now at this point, I have my Z pointing this way, my X pointing this way, and my Y pointing this way. I don't really like that my part is kind of upside down like this, so I can click on the flip buttons over here to make sure that they flip the right direction. Now I want my statue going the other way, so I'll click on the flip button here too. And now I have my trophy facing the right direction. Click on align. And now I have a nice alignment, which allows me to be able to see it from different points of view, my X, Y's, and Z views, by clicking on certain parts of this cube. I can even get a nice isometric view by clicking on this corner. Okay, one last time just to make sure 
check clean mesh, everything looks good. And if I really want to be sure, I can click on water tight remesh. And if it says the mesh is already water tight, then I know I'm good to go and I'm ready to 3D print my part. So I'll click on the export button. And then mesh. And now I'm ready to give it a name. And since this is ready to print, I'll add to print. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it.